Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is the top 12 problems or mistakes that can occur when replacing a thermostat, whether it's mercury or digital or wireless, whatever it may be. So, here we go. The first one, common. So, some thermostats don't allow you to uh, connect to a C terminal. So, just so you know, the R is 24 volt power. In this case, you have an RC and R. So R is the 24 volt power to the thermostat for heat. RC is the 24 volt power to the thermostat for cooling. When there's a jumper in place, it could be used for a furnace and air conditioning system all as one. When there's a jumper removed, then it can be used for two separate, two separate things. So anyway, you have power coming into the thermostat and then it comes back out of the thermostat through the common wire, back to the control board, and then the thermostat could be lit. If it does not have a C terminal, then you could use the thermostat with batteries only. The problem occurs when you see something like this, when you have the, the blue common wire attached to the B terminal. So somebody might know the thermostat color and terminal code, but basically C is blue and that's common. Well, sometimes people will end up accidentally putting it into B because blue. Okay, so in this case, what would happen is when you turn this on to heat, R and B are going to touch. All right, and then what's going to happen is you're going to blow the fuse, and uh, that would not be good. So on most furnaces, you're going to have a 3-amp fuse, and then on air handlers, you're going to have a 5-amp fuse. Uh, just so you know, I did link these down in the description below if you're looking around for them. So the B terminal is not used unless you're using it for a heat pump, uh, and that you're using it maybe for a heat pump that's a Rood Ream or weather maker. So that B terminal is not used for a furnace and air conditioning system. So problem number two, the jumper from RC to R. So say you have two separate systems and you leave the jumper in, what's going to happen is you have two hots coming together and, and that would not be good. So you want to remove that, that jumper right there from between the two R's if you have two systems like you see in here. You have two sets of thermostat wires, one running to heat, one running to, to cooling. From the one thermostat you have going to R for heat and the other wire in this thermostat wire, this is an 18 4 wire it looks like, it's heading over to the W. So W is for heat, this other thermostat wire you see Y is for cooling, G is for fan, RC is a 24 volt power in, and you have your C for common. So in this case you would remove the jumper. On this thermostat here, this will be for a furnace and air conditioning system only, so it will be one system. So say the jumper fell out on this right here, right down there, that would be a problem. So it would just depend on which wire you have attached into with your, with your R power wire, whether it's R or RC. So if only heat works, or if only cooling works, then that could be that you're missing your jumper. Problem number three. So you see that this right here, the dip switch is set in electric or heat pump. So if this was a furnace and air conditioning system and this was set over to electric or heat pump, it's not going to be the same as gas or oil. So this is what we need to set it at with a furnace and air conditioning system. Likewise, you could have some digital settings in the thermostat that you need to go through and set. So that could be a reason that your thermostat is not operating properly. This comes into play big time when you're looking at dual fuel systems. Problem number four. Say you wire up your thermostat and you have blue as your common, you have your red as your R power, you have your your green as your G for fan, you have your Y for cooling as Y, and you have your white wire as W for heat. You know, that's all wired right, and it's just the, the unit is not working properly. So you, you want to check, you can't just go by the thermostat color code itself, and you want to pay special attention on the terminal letters that you take every one of these wires off from. So you want to put them on the same terminal letters as you took off from the old thermostat, and you want to put them on the new thermostat. So in this case, this control board for a furnace is wired properly. So you have your blue common, your white heat, your Y for cooling, your R for power, 24 volt, and your green for fan. Then you have two wires, in this case it's two wires set up for the outdoor condenser, one on common, one on Y. So in this case, this wiring would be correct. In this case, it would not work out very well because you have your your yellow wire on W, your white wire on common, and your blue wire on Y. Yeah, blue blue makes sense, you know, because it's it's cooling, you know, and, and blue is cold. So, you know, you may have had somebody that 
put them in the wrong terminal letters and and that's what's throwing you off so you want to go in the the furnace or the air handler and make sure that you're checking the terminal letters make sure to turn the power off first then go in and just verify that your that your letters are connected to the right color thermostat wires before you go wiring the thermostat color code at the thermostat problem five maybe you're going by this thermostat over at Lowe's or Home Depot and you go to install it and all of a sudden you notice that there's no C terminal and so maybe you you want a C terminal because you want to be able to hard power this thermostat and not rely on batteries only well in this case that would not work out well so you want to make sure that you get in the right thermostat for the job and in this case uh, Pro 3000 that would end up having a C terminal so you could hard power or batteries and that particularly works good when you are cutting the R wire with a condensate float switch and that would end up making your thermostat go blank if there was a problem say the water had filled your condensate pan up and your switch your emergency condensate switch uh, broke the 24 volt electrical circuit going to your thermostat and this way you would know that there's a problem so just so you know if you're looking for that pro 3000 thermostat I have that link down in the description below problem number six so say you are taking your wires out and you're moving them you're getting ready to replace it and all of a sudden your common and red touch well, what that's going to do is that could end up shorting the fuse out so you want to make sure to turn the power off to your furnace and air conditioning system first um, even though it's just 24 volt wires make sure you turn that power off uh, for multiple reasons for safety number one for two uh, for your fuses go in and check for your fuse it would say 3 amp or 5 amp most likely on it and you're going to replace that with the exact same amperage size problem number seven wall anchors so this thermostat I put on these type of wall anchors and that's because you see that these anchors that typically come with the thermostats they just pulled right out so those holes were actually loose and this thermostat was moving all around so when you went to adjust the the temperature this was moving so that's no good so I typically use these self drilling wall anchors in order to mount my thermostats to the wall and they don't move they're they're pretty solid so that's in the case of when you do not have a stud anywhere near close to the thermostat these also work on eighth inch Lewan walls as well and that's all you need to do so you just have to have a small hole first maybe about a quarter inch or three sixteenths and then you can just go ahead and screw that right in clockwise so number eight make sure that you don't lose the thermostat wires down inside the wall so you want to make sure that you have a, grip, a good grip on your thermostat wires so that the, it, it ends up not falling down inside because you know due to the weight of the thermostat wires that could actually fall down inside the wall and then you lost it so then you have to go through a long process of fishing uh, back the thermostat wire trying to get it back to this small hole you might have to enlarge this hole in order to get that back in there so make sure that you're always holding on to it maybe you tape it onto a long fish or something like that such as this right here this is an insulation hanger so what I would typically do is I would just electrical tape it onto here um, especially what happens is when you go to take the thermostat back off and the thermostat wires are, are short that's when you want to pay, pay special attention to make sure that you do not lose the thermostat wires down inside the wall problem number nine always make sure that you cut your thermostat wires and strip them back make sure that you have a nice clean uh, straight piece of copper to work with you never end up wanting to straighten these out and trying to reattach them because you don't know how they stripped the last one or maybe it turned too much and it could end up breaking off so make sure that you just cut that back uh, and a lot of times it's not going to be that shiny this right here is nice and shiny and there's not going to be any resistance like there's no coating there's no oxidation on the outside of the copper wire so this will make good surface contact on the connection point so then you can go ahead and stick them back into whether it's a round curly cued screw or just a straight connection like this you can go ahead and, and tighten that down in there again what will happen if you don't do that and you just go ahead and put that back in it may not make good surface contact problem number 10 always make sure to test every function out before leaving so you don't want to just turn the fan on and check the fan and then turn the heat on and turn that up and make sure that that works you know you need to definitely do those things but you should also check for cooling as well so cooling on most thermostats are going to have a five minute delay 
Uh, and that's there just to protect the outdoor compressor to make sure that it doesn't turn off right away and have low pressure on one side and high pressure on the other side. It wants those refrigerant pressures to equalize and then, then it can go ahead and turn back on again. So that's a five minute delay is built in most thermostats. So you want to wait and make sure that that air conditioner does turn on. Likewise, you want to make sure that the units are all going to turn off as well. So say it's in the middle of the summer and you have checked the air conditioner you want to make sure that the, the air conditioner does shut off. So you may have done some type of other wiring that has nothing to do with the thermostat and all of a sudden the air conditioner just keeps running and running and running and running and doesn't shut off. So you want to make sure that everything is controlled by the thermostat correctly and is shutting off. Problem number 11, stripping the thermostat wires back too far. So whether it looks like this or maybe the thermostat wires are touching all the way back here and the homeowner may say, well, it's never had this problem before, but all of a sudden, the, the fan just will not shut off. And that would happen if, say, the R and the G were touching. So you may have some other scenario where maybe the outdoor condenser turns on when heat turns on. And that would mean that maybe the Y and the white are both touching. So you can have multiple problems with that, but you want to make sure that you, you only have the wire stripped back to right about here. And maybe even not even this far, you want to have it so just barely you see that the wire is stripped right here, so you're not far back. Problem number 12, checking the wire tightness. So you want to go ahead into each of these terminals, make sure the power is off, and then you can go ahead and tighten each one of them down. Uh, problem with these little tiny thermostat screws is that you think, oh, well, if I tighten it too hard, I might break it. But the, the thing is, you do want to definitely get it tight enough to make sure it's making a good connection with that thermostat wire. So that is that is the key. You want to make sure that you you definitely have these in tight enough and it's making a good connection. I've had that problem uh, on some Nest thermostats where you stick it in and you just want to pull back on the thermostat wire to make sure that it, it's definitely snug and it's definitely caught in there. As well, you want to go to the control board once again, make sure the power's off and go and test each, each one of these screws just to make sure that they're tight enough. See, that's not tight at all. You know, you want to make sure that and see, actually, that wire is over to the side. Want to make sure that it's in underneath one of these side things right here. So you see, there's four prongs that are holding the wires down. Make sure it's not outside of that. If you're having intermittent problems, it could be occurring just from your signal wires right here. The tools and supplies used in this video are linked down in the description below. And if you want to support this HVACR training channel, check out Patreon.com/slash/ACServiceTech, where we're rewarding the members there for supporting the channel with extra content such as articles, videos, and also answering questions. And I'd like to hear from you guys if you have any other things to add, any other mistakes and problems that can occur when replacing or installing a thermostat, put them down in the comment section below. Hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.